the leading cause of occupational injury, comprising 51% of all reported job illnesses. One out of every thousand Americans are afflicted, so it's pretty common. Um, if left untreated, can lead to complete irreversible nerve damage uh, with consequent severe loss of hand function. Uh, a lot of people think of carpal tunnel syndrome as just this uh, kind of weird feeling in the hands of uh, some tingling and numbness, but um, if left untreated, it can be very severe. Uh, you, can reduce, or, um, you can reduce your risk of carpal tunnel simply by losing weight and proper ergonomics. Um, and this last one, so for people who report having carpal tunnel syndrome, so this is BCPS, uh, over half of them received carpal tunnel surgery but of those, only 5% actually needed the surgery. So something to think about. Before we can talk about what carpal tunnel syndrome is, we need to know what are carpals. Uh, so we're going to go over a very brief anatomy lesson of the hand. So you have 27 bones in your hand. Uh, you have your phalanges, which are your fingers. So that is these guys right here. Then you have your metacarpals, which are located within the palm of your hand. So this is more so over here. Okay, and then at the base, which is around this area right here, this is where your carpals lie. And your carpals are made up of eight bones. Now, if we're looking at this like this, this is going to be the picture on your right. There's some more anatomy that we're going to go over. So sitting on top of your bones, your carpal bones, um, is a nerve, and it's called the median nerve. And uh, along with the median nerve, there are some tendons, and they're all bundled together, and they're tied down by uh, this ligament over here called the, I'll get my pointer in there, called the transverse carpal. But mainly, it's really packed tight, and tied down by this transverse carpal. Ligament. So there's not too much room to breathe here. So due to this uh, intricate relationship between this nerve and the rest of the structures, uh, I hope you can start to see where problems can arise from. So let's get into now what is carpal tunnel syndrome. So carpal tunnel syndrome occurs when the median nerve, which uh, runs from your forearm into your palm, somehow becomes pressed or squeezed at the wrist. So the carpal tunnel, like we said before, it's a narrow, rigid pass passageway. It contains uh, you know, ligaments, bones, um, and it's at the base of the hand. And ultimately, it houses this median nerve um, and the tendons that help bend your fingers. Now, the median nerve provides feeling for, as you can see here, right, your thumb, your index finger, your middle finger, and part can be part of also your ring finger as well. Um, it also can control some intricate uh, muscles at the base of your thumb here. And this is just a more cleaned up version of what that looks like. You can see there's actually two nerves here. There's the median nerve and there's the ulnar nerve. The ulnar nerve runs on top of this sheath, this carpal ligament. So it doesn't usually um, get entrapped by this uh, transverse carpal ligament. The median nerve does. And this is what causes you to have this uh, carpal tunnel symptoms in your thumb, index, middle, and part of your ring finger. Now, there are a variety of different symptoms for carpal tunnel syndrome. So first of all, symptoms will, you know, it just doesn't come overnight. They start gradually. And uh, you'll have some pain, tingling, and numbness in your fingers, especially the thumb, the index, and the middle finger. And some people say that their fingers feel useless and swollen, uh, even though there's no swelling that is present, because this is generally what happens on the inside. Um, uh, they often first appear in either one or both hands, but generally you'll get it in the dominant hand. And that's the one that's uh, generally affected first and is more severe. Um, why? Because you're mainly using that hand to do most of your activities um, or repetitive movements such as at work. Um, you know, often people may feel the need to 
take it out. Um, it helps alleviate some, some of those symptoms. Um, and it's actually an exercise that you can do to help alleviate some of the pain. Uh, as the symptoms worsen, uh, people usually feel it during the nighttime, uh, but as it worsens, it, you can also feel it during the daytime, which is just an indication that, um, that you really need to get that, that median nerve. Now, um, little things such as, uh, you know, holding a telephone, reading a, a book or a newspaper, or even driving, um, you know, can cause you to have these carpal tunnel symptoms. See you, you know, it, it, even in chronic and more severe cases that are untreated, that muscle, the base of your thumb, can start to waste away if those nerves become entrapped. And some people uh, with severe carpal tunnel syndrome can also lose the feeling of a hot and cold sensation um, and can often sometimes even burn the fingertips without even knowing it. They've lost it. Now, how is it caused? So there's many different ways uh, that you can uh, get carpal tunnel syndrome, but it is often the result of a combination of multiple uh, factors. Um, and, you know, as long as it's, there's something that's increasing on the median nerves and the tendons in the carpal tunnel, um, it will cause you to have that carpal tunnel pain. So some contributing factors in include uh, spraining or fracturing your, your carpal tunnel area, your carpal. You can have an overactive pituitary gland, right? So overactive pituitary gland uh, can actually cause you to have oversized hands. Um, this is more of a uh, metabolic issue. Um, and that can cause your nerve to become compressed. You can also have an underactive thyroid gland, which is hypothyroidism, and that can cause swelling of the tendons, uh, which can lead to compression of the nerves. Um, RA is a common factor for uh, leading to carpal tunnel syndrome, uh, and other factors uh, that may be contributing um, to compression uh, are using vibrating hand tools, such as a drill or even something big, bigger like a jackhammer. Uh, really irritate your nerves and uh, irritate your wrist and have those issues. Uh, fluid retention during pregnancy is a common one. Even during menopause, uh, that can be uh, an indication that you may have carpal tunnel syndrome. And then lastly, uh, simply developing a cyst around the wrist or um, a tumor within that carpal tunnel area can uh, obviously cause you to have uh, irritation of the median nerve. So the general idea is just anything that can cause that median nerve to become irritated will have those pain tingling and numbness down to these three fingers part of this. There's also something called the double crush syndrome. So uh, this was uh, this was done by a couple of researchers named Upton and McComas. And what they showed was that you can have this pain tingling and numbness that actually goes down your arm and it could have the same uh, symptoms as carpal tunnel syndrome, but the compression can actually be coming from further up in the nerve root. So if you see over here, uh, this is called the second crush and this is your median nerve. This is where you have carpal tunnel entrapment. This is your carpal tunnel right here but this median nerve comes from somewhere and it actually comes from the base of your neck. So nerves run down your neck, it's called your brachial plexus, but nerves will run down your neck and, uh, and it can you know, wind through underneath your first uh, clavicle, um, I mean, sorry, your clavicle and uh, run all the way down. Um, and you can have compression right here at the base of your neck and um, you know, what uh, chiropractors often uh, check, especially when people have uh, anything laying on missing these three fingers. Now let's talk about some risk factors. So women, uh, unfortunately, are three times more likely than men to develop carpal tunnel syndrome. Uh, this is just the research. And uh, people with diabetes or other metabolic disorders uh, 
you know, that directly affect the body's nerves and can make them more susceptible to uh, compression and also uh, at a high risk of having carpal tunnel syndrome. Um, it, usually, uh, it usually will occur in adults, not generally in children, um, and generally in the workplace. So workplace factors include, you know, existing pressure on damage to the median nerve um, that is generally caused by repetitive movement. So uh, if you look at this list right here, um, a lot of people think that the most people who, the people who often get carpal tunnel syndrome to do data entry or on the computer all day. And although this is a common, uh, common occurrence for people who do data entry, it's actually people who are in uh, these more these fields over here. So manufacturing, sewing, uh, finishing, cleaning, meat packing, uh, who generally develop the carpal tunnel syndrome. So this is mainly because they're doing repetitive motions over and over again, often with the same hand um, over many, many hours. And, uh, you know, with improper um, biomechanics of the wrist, you can definitely irritate those nerves. Uh, we're going to go over some ergonomics uh, in a little bit. So let's talk about some of the treatments. So notice this, uh, this slide says non-surgical treatments. Uh, non-surgical treatments do not necessarily mean conservative treatments. So we'll go through this list. So some of the first uh, options for treating uh, tunnel syndrome is having a splint. Creating a splint allows your wrist to be in the proper ergonomic position um, without you uh, pretty much flexing or extending um, your, your rib and irritating some of those nerves. Next thing is uh, NSAIDs. So NSAIDs are non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Uh, this is like your ibuprofen and acetaminophen um, and also prescription medications, which, you know, putting NSAIDs and prescription medications into your body uh, have many harmful effects, uh, often focus on treating the symptom instead of the cause of the symptom. So uh, I wouldn't call that necessarily conservative treatment. Um, you have alternative therapies such as uh, physiotherapy, and you also have chiropractic care. We'll get into a little bit about the research behind uh, um, you know, what chiropractic care can do for uh, carpal tunnel syndrome. And then let's talk a little bit about this. So um, there's something called open release surgery. Uh, so this is, when you have carpal tunnel, um, the carpal tunnel release is, it's one of the most common surgical procedures in the United States. Uh, many people have carpal tunnel, so they go to their doctor. Um, I had mentioned a statistic earlier on about how, um, about, you know, 50% of the people who get diagnosed with uh, carpal tunnel syndrome end up getting surgery when only 5% of the people actually needed the surgery. Um, but the, uh, the best rate for it is around 75 to 90%, but um, there can be complications with it. So you can have incision pain, that's pain around the, the scarring of the surgery, uh, persistent numbness and tingling, um, it's not 100% effective. Um, you can get infection, you can also have some nerve injury, um, and there can be some reoccurring carpal tunnel syndrome. Now, let's talk about ergonomics. So this is way of uh, getting to like the prevention side. So I want all of you guys to do this at home as you're watching this, um, for more of you guys are watching this. So, uh, First thing I wanna point out is something called a 90-90-90 rule. So this is, you wanna be 90 degrees at your hips, 90 degrees at your knees, and then 90 degrees at your feet. You want to make sure that your feet are touching the ground uh, and not up in the air. You wanna make sure that your uh, back is all the way uh, supported um, and, and sitting back in the chair. And we want your shoulders to be relaxed. We don't want them to be up here. Uh, essentially, we want your ears to be aligned with your shoulders. 
you'll notice this. I mentioned this in one of my other talks um, about posture, but um, a lot of you will notice that you won't be able to have your ears aligned with your shoulder because you have something called anterior head carriage uh, from that. You just you have that from long term uh, poor postural habits. Uh, and then lastly, we want your computer screen to be at eye level. A lot of you guys are probably watching this uh, potentially on your iPads or maybe at computer desks that um, the screen isn't raised. Uh, so you're having to flex your head forward to look down, uh, which causes a lot of stress on the um, back of your neck. And for the purposes of this talk, right, carpal tunnel syndrome, it is really important to have your elbows flexed, right? R you want it in line with the desk. You don't want it too high or too low because that will cause your wrist to either go this way or this way. And I have another slide on that. So a lot of, a lot of people have now adopted a standing desk and I would really encourage people to use a standing desk. But as far as the height, you wanna make sure that once again, as this person standing that your elbows flexed at 90 degrees and you want your keyboard to be sitting straight, straight ahead. Okay, and essentially you do want your screen to be at eye level. You don't want to have to look down. Um, to look Saying this are great. <laughs> okay, let's look at your hand, especially when you're on the computer. So the main thing that really causes you to have carpal tunnel uh, symptoms is the improper positioning of your hand. So if you notice right here, this hand is is a little too far uh, extended here at the wrist, okay? And it's tightening up that tendon right here and causing some compression of that median nerve, causing some symptoms. Same thing like this. I don't know who holds the mouse like this, but mainly you can see this one. Uh, but this is what you want to see. You want the wrist to be straight and right on there. And this just talks about certain deviation moving it left to right. Main thing, you just want it to be nice and centered. And then as far as keyboard placement, this is mainly the one I wanna talk about right here, is so many people have this right here at the bottom right, where their hands and wrists are flexed like this. Um, generally, you don't have this problem when you have a standing desk, but what we'll see is when you have, a, when you're sitting on a chair, or say um, a desk that's a little bit too tall for you, you'll rest your wrist on the table and then, uh, well, that just does the same exact thing. It will flex your wrist, it will cause irritation um, right here to the median nerve. Uh, best thing you can do, they do have those mats that you can put down here uh, to help keep your, your wrist uh, level. So uh, these are a couple tests. I'm gonna go over two tests that you can do from home. And these aren't necessarily exercises. These are tests to uh, see if you have developed carpal tunnel syndrome yourself, okay? These are orthopedic tests that we do in the office all the time when people come in complaining of, uh, you know, carpal tunnel symptoms and pain, tingling, and numbness in their thumb, index, and middle finger. So this, is called Balin's test, and it's a it's a maneuver. It's a diagnostic test for carpal tunnel syndrome. And uh, right, so what you do is take your hands together, sit up. But you can start low. Let me stand up a little bit. Start low and work your way up. And essentially, you want to have this position right here. Okay. And in that position, when you're squeezing your wrist together. Um, and it's causing some kind of compression in this area. Um, if you're having exacerbation of pain, right, in your thumb, index, or middle finger, uh, this could be an indication that you have uh, carpal tunnel syndrome. Now, this is only po like a positive indication in approximately 50% of cases. Um, you know, there's a lot of different tools that we need to use to. Uh, really diagnose someone with carpal tunnel syndrome. It's not definitive. But if you are currently experiencing any kind of pain, for those of you who are watching, definitely go get that checked. All right. 
The second task that we're going to go over is tenels. So this is super easy to do. Uh, all you're going to do is you're going to hold out your wrist just like this. You're going to take your finger and you're going to tap right here, right where that uh, that transverse carpal ligament is. You want to tap right there and see if that exacerbates any kind of pain, tingling, or numbness or dream feelings on your hands. Um, you know, it's just a way to detect if you have any kind of irritated nerves. Generally, when you have irritated nerves, there'll be some kind of inflammation or swelling. Um, so, you know, it's just performed with a very light tapping, percussing um, over that nerve to elicit a sensation of uh, almost that the needles uh, distribution along that nerve. Um, you know, it's generally done uh, further down the wrist and you just work your way up to where that area is. Um, and you're moving from uh, down here, up here. Uh, now, this one has a little bit less positive uh, indications. This is about 40%, uh, but we still use both of these tests to, um, you know, just as additional diagnostic findings to if someone's potentially suffering from carpal tunnel. Now, let's talk about some exercises we can do uh, to help with that. So, um, you know, from home or at work, you know, Workers can do this on the job um, or straight from home. Uh, they can perform, you know, stretching exercises. They can, uh, you know, you can take uh, frequent rest breaks and use corrective posture and wrist positioning uh, to avoid having uh, your uh, carpal tunnel pain get any worse. You know, um, simple things like wearing uh, fingerless gloves can help your hands stay warm and also flexible. One thing people will notice is uh, as the weather gets colder, uh, people will have some exacerbation of carpal tunnel pain for those people who have been suffering from carpal tunnel pain. Uh, also, simple things like your workstation, um, the tools, the tool handles, um, you know, even certain tasks, they can be redesigned to uh, enable workers to have the proper uh, natural position to uh, be able to do those jobs. So, um, you can do these exercises all day, but, and they will help, but, um, you know, you really have to, it's all about getting to the root of the problem, right? Um, if what's causing you to have your carpal tunnel pain is doing uh, repetitive motions at work, right? And you're not, ergon you know, your ergonomics at work are correct, then uh, that pain's going to, you know, that nerve's going to continue to get irritated and, um, and, you know, uh, exercise will help, but uh, you got to fix that part first. Uh, so let's talk about this exercise. Uh, this is the median nerve glide. So there's two ways to do this. Uh, the first way is depicted right here on the screen. So all you do is you place your palm right against the wall and you extend your elbow. You're applying a little bit of pressure towards the wall. As you extend your arm, you also want to tilt your head away from the wall, really stretching out all those tendons, um, stretching out that nerve. It's called the median nerve glide. Now, this may be a little bit, it makes it look easy, but it may be a little bit tough for you at the beginning, um, but you definitely want to work your way up to that. Um, another thing that you can do, um, and I still do this because I, uh, just a little bit more convenient is uh, you can hold your hand out like this, first like this, you grab your wrist like this, and you can extend your hand into the frame like this. And you just hold this for about 15 to 20 seconds, and you can just do this multiple times throughout the day. Um, and this, uh, this is also called nerve flossing. Yeah, <laughs> cool name for it. Straight out. This is gonna really help stretch all of these tendons and uh, ligaments over here, uh, including the median nerve. Great. Next is something called spider push-ups. So it's like making a spider with your hands and you're going to just put your fingers together just like depicted and really uh, put these together. Stand up a little bit, go like this, just push them together. This is really going to stretch out the palmar fascia. This is this area right here. 
um, all the carpal tunnel structures, all the deep bones in there. You do want to put a, uh, a good amount of force in there as you are stretching out that area. Uh, also stretch out the median nerve. And, um, you know, um, it's, it's really good to do these exercises, uh, you know, throughout the day, especially if you're working for long. Good. And let's talk a little bit about how chiropractic care can help with this. So um, we talked about how traumas, right, to the wrist can throw your carpal bones off. Now, what are we including in traumas? You know, even repetitive motions at work from long hours, such as typing, you know, the manufacturing jobs, you know, uh, something as simple as slipping and falling, they call it a boosh injury, right? Uh, falling on an outstretched arm, right? And catching yourself can throw out these eight bones in the incorrect position, okay? Uh, and it can become really irritating. Like I said, just because of that, that really intricate relationship between the bones and that nerve that causes you to have these, these median nerve pains can actually be com causing compression of the median nerve, right? So uh, what the Journal of Clinical Biomechanics demonstrated that mobilizing the carpal bones uh, can significantly increase carpal tunnel cross-sectional area in diameter and circularity. So essentially what they found was that as people got adjusted, after their, you know, sixth, seventh, eighth visit, um, they started to have relief of pain in their carpal tunnel area, which is great. Okay. All right. That is all I have for you guys today. If you guys have any questions, uh, please uh, leave them in the comments below, and I'll give it a couple minutes. Right on top. Great, thank you. All right, looks like we're all good. No questions, that's great. Um, like I said, we have these condition-specific talks on the third Wednesday of every month at 7 p.m., same time. We haven't decided what the next uh, topic is, but um, we'll be shooting out an email for that. Uh, thank you guys again. I really appreciate you guys attending, uh, and we'll see you next time.